afternoon. I am very, very happy to be here. Um, today I came, I want to accomplish three things by, by talking to y'all today. Uh, first and foremost, I got to personally thank all you, you students, the, my colleagues on the board, um, all the members of the USC family, faculty, and of the state of South Carolina for their encouragement, your kind sentiments, and your support. I want to reaffirm my love for the University of South Carolina. I want to reaffirm my love for the University of South Carolina and my support for the University of South Carolina and for the state of South Carolina. Um, and then I want to share, I want to uh, share a few thoughts about a shared obligation to move this institution forward, uh, forward for not ourselves, but for generations to come. Um, while I admit, for, you know, I quickly admit to enjoying uh, the occasional opportunity to talk about the wonder of me, um, <laughs> this is not about Darla Moore. Um, this is not about me. I'm dedicated to serving this state and this university as a citizen and a very proud alumni. And while I'm privileged to have the opportunity to engage in philanthropy, this is also not about money. By your reaction, <clears throat> yours, I mean you, the students and the people in South Carolina, by your reaction, you have ignited what I believe is a collective consciousness of this state to an issue that is far more fundamental to the state's future than any other challenge that we face. And this is about having the courage and the singular focus to understand the critical importance of a strong, progressive, and properly resourced higher education system. And I mean from technical colleges to research universities and the role it plays in securing a bright and productive future for all of us. As you all know, we have an A-team here at Carolina. We have an A-team on our side with leaders like Harris Pastides and Hilde Teagan, dean of our business school. Their dedication and diligence and that of the entire faculty here and staff in delivering the promise of a world-class education and a first-tier university capable of competing at the highest level. We can compete at the highest level. Just because I no longer serve on the board does not mean for one second that I will be deterred in my efforts to expand our reach for excellence. <clears throat> and I'm sure Y'all have noticed that I don't need a title or a position to speak out. I just need a voice, my vision, and a forum to be heard, just like you did this week. That's a good lesson in this. I'll not allow our university to become a discounted graduation mill. I want you to be proud of your degree. I want you to be first in line for the best jobs available. And I want you to stay in South Carolina to be a part of our effort to make our state great. Excellence is our standard, and it must be maintained even if there are those who would offer policies that would dumb us down. We all got goosebumps, if you remember, in watching that scene from Field of Dreams when the ghost of uh, predicts of South Carolina's own legendary shoeless Joe Jackson. If you remember, he said, if you build it, they will come. Well, when it comes to higher education in South Carolina, if we don't build it, a highly educated workforce, nobody will come and nobody will stay. If we're steadfast, though, and maintain a singular focus on our educational structure and institutions, progress will come. Businesses will come, jobs will come, 
and the state we all want for ourselves and future generations will become a reality. That's my message, and I know you get it, even if, uh, even if others may not. That is the message. Now, I got one more thing I want to talk about. This is very personal. There's been speculation that I would take my checkbook and go home. Okay? I want you to know that my commitment to USC is as strong as ever, and I would like to take this opportunity to announce, to announce a gift. I want to make a gift, and I want to make it in, to something that I think has got enormous potential for the future of this state. And that's a $5 million gift for the establishment of an aerospace research center. Thank you. Okay, that's not all. I've got something else to say. Okay. Aerospace research, the wave of the future, the way the state in the knowledge economy, this state can play a tremendous role, and our people can contribute mightily to this. Um, but you, see, you remember, just like the, uh, the marvelous job that Clemson has done with ICAR, in the Automotive Research Center. That's what I would envision for us to be able to, to offer in an aerospace research center. Um, the second thing I want to talk about in the context of this is among you know, other things that I look for in my commitments to the university, you know, the, the string that I attach to the privilege to being able to be philanthropic. The string I attach is the demand for excellence. That's my string. It's always been my string. That's the return that I want on my investments. Um, so let me explain to you that the commitments I would like to have associated with this gift, uh, in addition to being excellent, I want to name this for somebody in South Carolina. I want to name this for a person who demanded excellence not only for himself, but for everyone around him, and who is an American hero, an American hero from South Carolina, who has, in my opinion, not been given the recognition that he deserves. But this person is Dr. Ronald E. McNair, who was one of the first <laughs> black astronauts. I have to tell you, he's been, Ron McNair has been one of my heroes for life. This was not a wealthy man. This was an excellent man. This was an incredibly intelligent man. He grew up in the rural deep south. Happened to come from Lake City. I don't know what's in the water down there. Or that, <laughs> those cotton fields back home have something going on in them. But anyway, he grew up in Lake City. And we, he, was, he was somewhat older than me. But we grew up in segregated schools. And I'll never forget the story about it, and it's legendary now. Um, he went to the public library in Lake City. This would have been back in the 60s, I guess, or, yeah. They wouldn't give him a library book. Wouldn't give him a library book. This was an African-American young man. Wouldn't give him a library book. He went on to become a PhD in laser physics at MIT, out of Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> and then was selected as one of the first, there was, I think they picked 35 astronauts for the Challenger or the Discovery or what, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they picked only 35 astronauts out of tens and tens and tens of thousands. And Ronald Lee McNair from Lake City, South Carolina was one of them. He's one of the most significant people to ever come out of South Carolina, and I am privileged to request that with this donation to an aerospace center, who else in this state could we honor more than one of our very own in the form of Ronald Lee McNair? So that's my. <laughs> and then second is I would urge the commitment from the state. I would, I would ask the state 
to make a commitment to us to match this gift. Um, If it's the desire of our state leaders to help South Carolina grow and expand our economy, then this is an investment that will reap extraordinary returns for us. So that's it. That's very, very simple. And neither you nor I need to be on the Board of Trustees to make this happen. We need simply to hold our leaders accountable and tell them we understand that they may not help us they may not be able to help us, but we demand that they not hurt us or impede <laughs> or hurt us or impede our march to excellence. So I'm so proud to be here today. Each and every one of you has made me proud, proud to be a South Carolinian, proud to be from the University of South Carolina. And all I would ask you is to continue to use your voice for excellence, not for me, but for this great university in our beloved state. So thank you very much. Oh. I have said, um, I would like, because I've come here for the students, because I'm thanking you, and I love you, and I want to do whatever I can to continue to help you in your pursuits, I'm going to take a few questions. I'm going to take a few questions from the students. You know, I don't, I don't know, and I, you know, I don't even think about things like that. What I think about is, I'm all about excellence. I'm all about being the absolute best we can be. And I, I focus on that ever since I came back to South Carolina. It's, it's motivated my philanthropy, my time, the use of my you know, resources. And I think that should be the push for all of us. But I, I don't think about the differences. I think about what is my single focus and my single mission in life. And I appreciate the question, but I, I really am all about us being the absolute best we can be. There's a young lady. I'll take. All universities in South Carolina. Love this question. And this is absolutely the core of the question for the future of our state is right here. We've got to create jobs. The only way we're going to keep you and those like you in this state is when we create jobs commensurate with your education and your talent. All the more reason to support the Aerospace Research Center because that in conjunction with what hopefully will develop as ICAR has is a cluster of aerospace research, aerospace dynam dynamism in the state, that is going to be what keeps, what keeps people like you here. We got to cut, you know, we talk about budget cuts, that's essential because we've overspent so badly, but we also got to hear about the revenue side too. And the revenue side is jobs. You never cut yourself to profitability. Remember that. All my little business students, you cannot cut your way to profitability, right? Create, we've got to boost the revenue side, and that be jobs for people like you. All right, I'll take one more. Yes. <clears throat> First of all, thank you so much for being here. I don't have a question, quite honestly, but I wanted to, I wanted to take this opportunity, I think, to thank you for your gift to the University of South Carolina and more specifically to thank you for naming that building after Ronald McNair. As an African-American studies student who studied race in South Carolina, you almost brought tears to my eyes with that gift. And I take this opportunity to thank you on behalf of African-American students across this university who I'm sure were touched by your gift. So 